there's no problem. But the moment one party fails to deliver, mm. they step in immediately. So the party doesn't even have to worry about, oh, what happens for replacement cost and my market risk. It's immediately covered by the front clear guarantee. How much? So, um, right what's now, the size of what's available? Right now, $20 million has been put, um, has been agreed. But this is dependent on the size of the market and the activities in the market. So they're willing to, to look um, at um, increasing this as we go along. But for now, we have a $20 million um, unfunded guarantee is in place. Amazing. Is there anything to do with the CSCS here? Um, in this case, no. Um, there's nothing. It's, um, it's just a, it's a standalone clearing house, so there's really nothing to do with the CSCS in this, in this situation. Mm. And, um, and, and, and you know, sure, CSCS can provide what FM Duke would have wanted to do. Um, anybody can provide it, I believe. But um, it depends on who is able to put together the infrastructure to run with it. So it's just the same way to say anybody can set up a company and anybody can run the company. But I think the advantage that FMDQ has is that it has the trading um, platform where all the dealing members are trading. And it makes it seamless just to go through the FMDQ Clare um, infrastructure to be cleared. So FMDQ is providing an integrated trade from execution to settlement and um, service across board. So that's what probably makes it a bit more uh, distinct. He suspected that uh, FMDQ has its own aspirations and what yeah. the market should expect moving forward yes. with this uh, a new initiative, uh, right. six months uh, uh, ongoing. Right. Uh, what are these aspirations? Okay, so the first one I spoke about was the, 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 the um, settlement system, the clearing and settlement system, um, which is the a module in the QX, the FMDQ QX, which was just launched. So I've spoken about the, F, the settlement solution where um, we link straight from FMDQ's trading platform to the settlement of system of um, CBM. That's one. Um, we intend to launch that across all other products. Right now, it's just the fixed income market that is enjoying that um, three days on now. Um, the next thing is... FMDQ, is look, FMDQ Claire is, is also um, looking to become an, a CCP, a central counterparty, which is where the guarantee, which is where um, a, a, an infrastructure that then provides a guarantee in itself to the market. And one of the things that would su support this drive is regulation. Right now in Nigeria, we don't have um, regulation to support a central counterparty, but um, the good news is that the CAMA, the Company and Allied Matters Act Amendment Bill, um, which has been um, put forward, has been passed by the Senate, and, and it's going on for the next um, reviews. And it would, if that bill is passed into an act, it would provide novation, netting, bankruptcy regulation that then can support a CCP. So we're looking forward to the... Um, so that act coming into place because that would give FMDQ the regulatory and the legal backing to then become a central counterparty, which is what we want to be ultimately. And you'll be funding that? Um, yes, we will be funding that in the sense that... Now, the way the central counterparty works is that there will be different levels of um, contributions to this fund from different parties in the market. So it won't just be FMDQ Clare funding. You, you, have, you haven't decided will. on how, who will pay how much? Uh, not, um, yet. not yet. Not yet. Not okay, yet. maybe the law first, then mm -hmm. we can always talk about okay, who, who, who pay, who puts what on the table. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much and congratulations. Thank you very uh, much, Bryson. Bringing a lot of innovations into the market. Cody Ugoji, Associate Executive uh, uh, Director at FMDQ Autism Securities Exchange. We continue on the side of innovation, technology and creativity with the Buhari's new advisory group. We've got one of the members who were inaugurated on Monday, live here in the studios. That's coming right next. <laughs> There's a reason Africa is called the new frontier. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands.
UBA, Africa's global bank. Started the business week very heavy in Abuja, the country's political capital. It's been very busy for the for the Buhari's administration. So the vice president, uh, Professor Yemi Ushibajo, on Monday inaugurated a new advisory group on technology and creativity as part of the industrial policy and competitiveness advisory council set up by President Buhari in 2016. The vice president is the chairman of this advisory group. Uh, this group is made up of relevant uh, ministers uh, in the government, uh, as well as the heads of some agencies as well, and uh, leading business people. Uh, on Monday, the vice president uh, told this group that they must add value to the existing policies of the government with inclusive and all-embracing roadmap for promoting technology and creative sectors and create jobs and grow the economy. A very brief summary uh, uh, fact sheet about Nigeria's ICT and creativity sector. Uh, the ICT sector has about $70 billion in uh, investments, that's according to the vice president, while the creative sector is one of the world's fastest uh, growing. Uh, then Nigeria uh, is ranked about 134 in terms of ICT development, while creative sector adds just about 1.3% to, uh, to our GDP. So that's the the, 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 that's the fact sheet, as it were, the basics as we know it. But so let's uh, uh, flesh up this conversation. So that advisory group was inaugurated on Monday, and one of the private sector members of that advisory group on technology and uh, creativity is joining us here. The Sudo Farid Arugunade is the CEO at uh, Workstation, is a serial entrepreneur and what you call a venture capitalist. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, young guys, young people. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah. to, to run this. Yes. The, I mean, well, you know. Yeah. How many uh, of you are really young in that team? Uh, okay. The the whole team comprises of, I think, close to 60 people, including 60. including government officials. That's so, large. Uh, yes. That's and, and you probably have about uh, about 30 to 40. From the private sector. From the private sector. Young people. Mm. You're doing really amazing, fantastic stuff, developing a lot of different new products that would help automate all the different processes that we're used to on a day-to-day -day basis, even as simple as being able to check your account balance on the go. You, really? you know, remember the, remember back back in the day, people would have to go to the bank, the branches, you know. Mm -hmm. So technology is essentially uh, making things a little bit more simplified. The, ga the game changer. Completely. Uh, I'm sure about 30, 40 uh, numbers of you who are from the private sector will have to bring something to the table, and that's the, the reason why you were there. Yes. So, uh, in that particular inaugural meeting, inauguration and what have you, I'm sure you had some interactions with uh, fellow members of this advisory group. What's your take on who is who in that team and their reading and their mindset about getting ready to go? So, so I think one of the key, uh, well, there are a few comments that were made by the private sector participants. And, uh, you know, I think one of the consensus that we all had is that government needs to only serve as a catalyst. Uh, for us to be able to really push forward our agenda, not so much as trying to reinvent what we're already doing, you know, because we have already started, we've embarked on this mission to innovate yes, and as drive as the as digital as as as, 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 yes. So essentially, we don't need the government to come in and start, you know, oh, we want to create this, we want to replicate what, you know, the private sector is already doing. So, so let's just let your creative yeah, energy run wild. And then just, you know, let's implement the right type of policies, you know, 
that would help and continue to sustain the industry as it keeps growing. That's where the real issue is. Exactly.